Welcome to another midweek devotion. I want to just read one verse to you to start. Paul writing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. It's advantageous to our Christian lives to become students of the biographies of, of Scripture. Because every type of human character is found there. And they're, they're valuable lessons we can learn from it, men and women who are presented to us by the Spirit of God. Today I want to talk about a man called Micaiah who was gifted with the prophetic ability. And uh, it was a very challenging time for him, but he was faithful to the gifting and calling of God. His name means who is like Jehovah. Would you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter, sorry, 1 Kings chapter 22. I'm going to read the first nine verses. For three years there was no war between Aram and Israel. But in the third year Jehoshaphat king of Judah went down to see the king of Israel. The king of Israel had said to his officials, Don't you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us? And yet we are doing nothing to retake it from the king of Aram. So he asked Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to fight against Ramoth Gilead? Je Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, I as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, first seek the counsel of the Lord. Hold that, first seek the counsel of the Lord. So the king of Israel brought together the prophets, about 400 men, and asked them, Shall I go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Go, they answered, for the Lord will give it into the king's hands. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? The king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, Well, there is still one man through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, because he never prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. He is Micaiah son of Imlah. The king should not say that, Jehoshaphat replied. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Bring Micaiah, son of Imlah, to me. So, verse 1. Let's, let's look at this story together. There's truth here for all of us. Verse 1. For the Three years there was no war between Aram, that's Syria, and Israel, that's the northern kingdom. But in the third year, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, that's the southern kingdom, went down to see the king of Israel. All we know of Micaiah, the prophet, is found in this single interview that he has with Ahab. It's mentioned again in Chronicles, but it's the same story. Ahab says, he tells he prophesied over me, but he never prophesied anything good. I, I don't like him. There were three main prophets in the first book of Kings. The first one you know so well, Elijah, who had the battle on Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal. And then this one not so well known, Ahijah, also a great prophet of God. And he, he was... God used by God to remind Solomon of his sins and the judgment coming because of them. And also he brought idolatry back into Israel. Um, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites. The Lord wasn't pleased with Solomon at all. And his kingdom was going to come to an end in judgment. And one day Ahijah walked along the road and towards him was coming an official from the government of Solomon. His name was Jerry Boehm, and he was wearing a brand new robe. And as they came together, Ahijah the prophet took off his robe, that's Jerry Boehm's new robe, and he tore it into 12 pieces, and he handed 10 pieces to Jerry Boehm. He explained to him he was going to be king over 10 of the tribes, because Solomon's kingdom was going to come to an end and be divided. But notice this, for three years there was no war between Amram, Amram Syria, and Israel. No war. Uh, it was three years of opportunity for Ahab to turn to the Lord because there was no famine of the word of God in his day. There were three major prophets who were speaking into his life, but he wouldn't listen. Friends, when people speak into our lives, when the word of God speaks into our life, we need to listen. 
and obey. But Ahab wouldn't. Three years. The Lord had given mercy for three years and given victories as well in war to Ahab. But he didn't listen. But he had this thought in his mind as we read here. Verse 3. The Lord, the, the king of Israel, had said to his officials, Don't you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us? And yet we're doing nothing to retake it from the king of Aram. So he asked Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to fight against Ramoth Gilead? Let's join together in this good cause. It's our city, it's built on our land, it belongs to us. It's been lost to the enemy, let's go take it back. You know, when people get good ideas, we need to really, what seem to be good ideas, get in the city, because Ramoth Gilead was a, a refuge city. It's one of the six refuge cities. It seems a good idea to get it back. It seems volume, yes. But we need to be careful when people get great ideas that we weigh them and we seek the counsel of God first, or we could be in trouble. We need God's wisdom when we make moves such as this. But Ahab wasn't listening. But what, what did King Jehoshaphat think about this proposal. Join me, help me. He says, I am as you are, my people, your people, my horses is your horses, but first seek the counsel of the Lord. Very, very wise. In all our situations as well. First seek the counsel of the Lord. Jehoshaphat is cautious. He gives good advice. He knows he'd be treading on thin ice because Ahab is one of the most wicked kings that Israel's ever had. And Joshua has been one of the best kings they've ever had uh, in, 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 um, in Judah. So he says, we'll be treading caution. Okay, says Ahab, I'll, um, I'll get some more people. I'll get some more people. Seek first the Lord, we'll do that. I can arrange that. And so in verse 6, the king arranges, brings together the prophets, about 400 men. And asked them, shall I go to war against Ramoth Gilead? Or shall I refrain? Let me say, where did these 400 prophets come from? Well, on Mount Carmel in 1 Kings 18, 450 prophets of Baal lost their lives. But the 400 prophets of Asherah that ate at Jezebel's table didn't. They were still around. And here they are appearing now to bear testimony to, to the king that he should go into battle. A lion spirit is going to speak through them. You can just imagine, he calls them all, waving his finger at them, knowing that they owe him a lot. He, they eat at Jezebel's table, that's his wife. You'd better say, yes, I pay your salaries. Oh dear. Hmm, prophets must be profitable in some places, like here. So, of course, verse 6, Go, they answered, for the Lord Jehovah will give you into the king's hands. But they're speaking lies. But they still choose to use the name Jehovah, Big J, Jehovah, as their authority. But they're lying. You know, Satan has filled our world with false prophets. They call themselves sometimes Christian leaders, children of God. They take the name of Jesus on their lips. They give good so-called guidance and counsel. But really, on the outside, they're white, white as sepulchres, but in the inside, they're dead men's bones. They've, they're lifeless to the Spirit of God and the true guidance of God himself. They're a menace. Their attraction, what is it? Well, they speak to the carnal mind good things. The people want the, the carnal mind wants to hear, but they do not speak the truth to the carnal mind, that they sh need to hear to repent. When Paul was speaking to Fe Felix, and he reasoned with him of his sins, his righteousness, self-control and judgment to come in judgment, Felix drew back and said, Paul, let's leave it there. One more convenient day I'll call on you. Don't talk to me about my sin. So they all said, go. Jehovah will give you Ram of Gilead. But things weren't ringing true in Jehoshaphat's ears. Verse 7. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? 400 prophets. Not one 
It is prophesied of the Lord. The king answered, verse 8, uh, Joshua, there's still one man through whom we can inquire of the Lord. It's strange, but Elijah was around, but he's strangely quiet in this story. In this story. The one man around, well, I hate him because um, he never prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. His name's Micaiah, son of Imla. Joshua said, the king should not talk like that about God's servant. But how can any true prophet of God speak good things into an evil life? Unless they repent. It was God's mercy in reaching out to Ahab, but Ahab turns his back on God's mercy. Here we see Micaiah, a man in touch with God. He knew the mind of God. He was God's mouthpiece. He was a man of courage, as we shall see, because he's hated by the king, but he still will not say the things the king, with his itching ears, wants to hear. Jesus told his disciples, that, relating to us, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. But as it is, as it is I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Now there comes a, um, a temptation, a great pressure to compromise the truth to Micaiah. He was brought into the presence of royalty, two kings. And Israel knew exactly, the Israel king knew exactly where he was. He called to one of his officials to bring Micaiah, this man I hate, bring him in at once, bring him in. And the Holy Spirit then paints this scene in verse 10 uh, of briefly, but powerfully, of this moment. Worldly pomp, the two kings sitting in the gate of Samaria, pomp, power, gorgeous apparel, intimidation, threatening to engulf the messenger of truth. 400 of these prophets have said, go, go, go. Look at verse 10. Dressed in their royal robes, the kings of, the kings of Israel and, Je and, king of, king of Israel and Je Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, were sitting on the thr their thrones at the threshing floor, by the entrance to the gate of Samaria, with all the prophets, that's 400 of Jezebel's prophets, prophesying before them. Oh, what a noise. 400 noise would be tremendous. It was, but it was music to Ahab's ears. He, they were in agreement with him. Yes, he should go and do this battle. He will, he will win the victory. He will get Ram of Gilead back. Sweet words, smooth words, but they were lies. It's a bit like in 1 Kings 18 when... Elijah faces the 450 prophets of Baal. They were dancing, they were shouting, they were screaming. They cut themselves and trying to get the fire to fall on their altar. It didn't work. Frantically prophesying, nothing happened. Demon power at work in human life. There was one prophet who went even further. His name was Zedekiah. Look at verse 11. Zedekiah, son of Kaniah, made iron horns and declared this is what the Lord Jehovah says with these you will gore the Aramaeans the Assyrians until they are destroyed all the other prophets were prophesying the same thing oh dear 400 prophets saying the same thing Whew. it is very intimidating Micaiah saw the scene he was there he couldn't have been felt too good about it. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, like John the Baptist, that number 401, this great crescendo, and all agree with the king, you're going to win. When we get into the position where we're intimidated, we mustn't give in to the enemy's <clears throat> intimidation. Where we seek to overwhelm us, we must not give in. And then even there's a whisper in the ear of Micaiah. Look at verse 13. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, there's one man. The other prophets are predicting success for the king. Let your word agree with them and speak favourably. Oh, the temptation to please man rather than God. We'll always have it in our lives too. But we must stand firm. All of us understand these pressures. Paul actually said, If I please men, I would not be the servant of Christ. Micaiah is faithful to his calling. Look at verse 14. 
But Micaiah said, as surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what the Lord tells me. Wow, let's seek such a passion, friends. Only to speak the truth. Only, ever. Whatever the pressure is to change. When Martin Luther was told the whole world was against him, his answer was, then I'm against the whole world. Our world is exceedingly rich in lies, but very, very poor in truth. That makes truth priceless. Truth is priceless. Seek it, embrace it, live it. So the two royal kings sitting on the thrones, on the fleshy floor by the city gate, Samaria looked rich, but they were poor, especially Ahab. Compared to the riches of faith possessed by Micaiah, who was just arrayed in poor prophet garments. He was poor compared to Micaiah, really. Look at verse 15. The king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall we refrain? That was a strange response, an interesting response to Micaiah. Oh, attack and be victorious for the, the Lord will give it into the hands of you. But Micaiah's tone of voice I have got the message. It's, it's what you want to hear, I'll say it. <laughs> it follows the spirit of Elijah on the Mount Carmel of the Baal. Shout louder, shout louder, they can't hear you. They can't hear you. Maybe your God's asleep. Really here, Makar is taunting King Ahab uh, the same way. And Ahab realises that Makar is doing that. And it's a bit of derision and sarcasm. What, what power to... Play games with your enemy. Verse 16. The king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Well, M M Micaiah fulfills his duty to speak the truth. And that is it. To speak the truth. Glory, glory, glory. The words he spoke you can discover in verses 17 to 24 in our chapter. But let me quickly summarise. He says this. To King Ahab, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep, without a shepherd. And the Lord said, these people have no master. It's a word that Israel is going to lose its king, Ahab. And then let each one go home in peace. But the, he says the eyes will retreat from the field of battle, it'll all be over. But God had allowed, God had allowed a lying spirit in the mouth of all these 400 prophets of Ahab. He'd allowed it because Ahab refused with his itching ear. He didn't want the truth. He wanted what he wanted. It opened his door disastrously to coming towards the end of his life. The Lord had decreed disaster, verse 23. Well, after this prophecy, how was Micaiah treated? Well, he got no thanks from it from, for speaking the truth. And don't be surprised that you won't either. Then Zedekiah, the SD who had the iron horns, went up and slapped Micaiah in the face. Which way did the spirit of the Lord go? Where did he, where, where did he, where did he go? From, how did he move from me to you? Literally he was saying, I speak the truth, uh, Micaiah, not you. I am the truth speaker. I am the, I'm the one who speaks the truth. You're lying, I'm not. And of course, it's um, he slapped Micaiah's face. This was really serious. It was really serious. Smiting the speaker does not break the teeth of truth, as they say. Smiting the speaker does not break the teeth of truth. Amen to that. They did it with Jesus. They blindfolded him and said, Prophesy, who hit you? Well, if you hit a prophet of the Lord, you'll just squeeze more truth out of him. And it might be truth you definitely don't want to hear, and it was in this case. Micaiah, in verse 25, said this. This is to Zedekiah. Micaiah said, you will find out on the day you go hide in an inner room. This is a word of knowledge coming through now. You will regret your attitude. You will be smitten. You will become a fugitive. Men will seek your life. And they did. Zedekiah came to a terrible end in the Bible. A terrible end. 
He, he was into committing adultery with his neighbours' wives. He was in the name of the Lord speaking lies. And he, sm he smote the face of Micaiah, prophet of the Lord, which was very serious. He ended up under commanded ne ne Nebuchadnezzar commanded Zedekiah to die by throwing him alive into a fiery furnace. A horrible, cruel oof, death he had. It's very wise counselled. We must all heed. Touch not the Lord's anointed. Do my prophets no harm. It's a dangerous place to be. What happened to Micaiah? Well, verse 27. The king of Israel, and that's Ahab, ordered to take Micaiah and put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. Then Micah, then Micah declared this, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, Make mark my words, all you people. Is all you people be witnesses? If he comes back, I'm a false prophet. What became of Micaiah's prophecy? Ahab did come back very peacefully, but he was dead. It's a, it's an amazing it is it is such an amazing story. Um, Although Ahab sort of thought, well, I don't like what he's saying. I'm, I'm going I'm to die in battle. I'm going to lose. Things are going to go wrong. The king of Israel has said to Jehoshaphat, I'll enter the battle in disguise. And um, so I'll be safe. And then to direct any danger away from himself to Jehoshaphat, he said, Jehoshaphat, you wear your royal clothes in the battle and I'll just be in disguise. They won't know who I am. And <laughs> It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. Jehoshaphat's got himself in a mess, really, now. He comes alongside an evil, the evil king that he did. He, he did. Um, it, Jehoshaphat, it was a serious thing he did. Because now in the battle commences and Jehoshaphat attract, attracts the enemy straight away. It's royal clothes. He's in battle with royal clothes, like bees to a honeypot. Lord Nelson went into battle at Trafalgar. He was told, don't wear all your medals, Nelson, because you'll be sticking out like a store thumb to anyone to kill you. And he said, I won these medals in battle and I shall wear them in battle. And of course, a man in the rigging in a French ship, a sharpshooter, he saw, he saw uh, Nelson on the deck and he fired a shot, went through his shoulder, and he, within hours, Nelson was dead. Now you wear your royal robes, Jehoshaphat. That'll keep the enemy on you and not me. And the charity has already been told by, uh, by Ben Hadad. Get the king, get the king. And it says thirty-two charities bear down on him, thinking he was the king Ahab, but he wasn't. But God delivered graciously Jehoshaphat from this battle. Jehoshaphat cried out when he saw them heading towards him. I'm not Ahab. I'm Je Jehoshaphat. And um, it just shows you when we compromise or we'll make any wrong mistakes, we can get into really serious trouble. But God is merciful. God is merciful. Um, it says here in verse 34, if you look at this final verse here, verse 34, someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the sections of his armour. He was seriously wounded. But no one can say, reading the end of this story, that Ahab was a coward. He wasn't. All day he was propped up in his chariot with the blood draining from him. He encouraged his troops, but he died at sunset. And the battle was lost. And the final part of Micaiah's prophecy was fulfilled. That he would, all would go home in peace. A cry spread through the army, verse 36. Every man to his town, everyone back to his land. There was peace. Let me leave you with a final thought. The question of lasting importance to many of us. Have I set myself with all my heart to serve the Lord? Am I truly seeking the power and the wonder of the gift of prophecy to bless and encourage and strengthen the church and my family and myself? It's a valuable gift. We've seen it in action and it's always attacked because it's such a powerful, wonderful gift from the Spirit of God. Ahab, he built cities, ivory palace, raised armies, but he hated 
Makoa, and it's always that Makoa spent a lot of time in prison because of Ahab. Ahab was an evil man. He refused to repent, although God gave him a space to a space to three years. But he that does the will of God abides forever. May this be a blessing to you to run after spiritual gifts, especially to prophesy. Read again 1 Corinthians chapter 14 carefully and slowly and see what the Holy Spirit might bring into your life to be a blessing into your family, into the church and into the world. Amen. God bless you.